All right, welcome back. And now, open day topics once again, just to intimate you, if you just joined us. Uh, we're looking at um, the xenophobic attacks uh, against uh, foreign nationals residing in South Africa. We know that some Nigerians have returned a uh, court see uh, Air peace and the federal government. I will also uh, take a look at, I think, one of the biggest headlines for this week, which was the presidential election petition tribunal, uh, which was held on Wednesday and saw the victory of the president, President Muhammad Buhari, against the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party. And now joining us uh, from Lagos, we have Mustafa Issa. Uh, Mustafa Issa is the head of News Lagos. Mustafa, you're welcome to the program. Thank you, Zika. Good morning. Good morning. And in Abuja, we have Ikenga Ugochinyere. Ikenga is a political al analyst and a spokesperson of the Coalition of United Political Parties. I will come to you, Ikenga, uh, very shortly. And then we also have via Skype Salma Ba. Salma Ba is a foreign national based in South Africa. Uh, she'll be speaking to us from South Africa via Skype. Salma, you're welcome once again to the program. Good morning. Good morning. All right, I need you to please bring us up to speed with what's happening. Now, on Thursday, uh, on Wednesday night, some Nigerians came back to the country from South Africa and they recorded some hitches, you know, before uh, boarding the plane. A lot of um, uh, hitches were experienced. Can you bring us up to speed with uh, what transpired, the feeling in South Africa now, uh, knowing that some nationals, foreign nationals, are leaving the country? Salma, did you hear me? Hello, Salma, can you hear me? Hello? I can yeah. hear you. Yeah, hello? Great, I can hear you loud and clear. Yeah. Okay, great. Now, on, mm -hmm. on Wednesday night, some Nigerians got back to the country got back to Nigeria from South Africa. And some other nationals have been fleeing in South Africa uh, for fear of this xenophobic attack. I want you to give us an up to speed or uh, you know, the latest information concerning uh, what the mood is like in South Africa, knowing that some nationals are leaving their country and that with the hitches experienced by these people before leaving South Africa. Oh, okay. Um, things are back to normal. I think. Hello? Please go ahead. Okay, uh, things are back to normal. It was quite an emotional goodbye for most of the South Africans, actually, because some of these Nigerians that are going back home, remind you, they have families, kids, wives, and they, they, they have to go. So it was very emotional at the airport. And actually, some of them were angry going back uh, at the airport and then through the, the, the immigration and all that, because um, most of them have to do emergency traveling documents to go back. Now, the South African government wanted to know how they got into the country and how they're living at the same time. So it, it caused uh, quite a delay at the airport, but um, everything went smoothly for now. But like in the city of Johannesburg, everything is back to normal. Okay, Salma, I, if you can still hear me, I completely would doubt that. But if you can still hear me, um, how normal are these things that you say has returned? Uh, are you still in hiding? Uh, can you go to work? Can you, can you go to your normal day's activity, um, Salma? Yes, things are back to normal. Everybody is going to work. Everything is fine. Just that some of the, the foreign-owned businesses are still shut down. And uh, like, for instance, now the South African government is taking things um, by the law. They are going into malls and shops that are owned by foreign nationals. And the South African police department is also teaming along with the home affairs and the South African revenue sources. They're going through shops to shops, checking for counterfeit goods and stuff like that. But things are back to normal. I, I can go to work, I can, uh, my kids can go to school. Things are back to normal. All right. 
I, I want to know uh, what South Africans feel about this in as much as um, Nigerians and other countries who were in South Africa are leaving. What is the mood or feeling of South Africans? Is this what they really wanted? Like I said it before, this is just a group of small people. You know, the youth, people that don't understand what is going on, people who are frustrated uh, for the rising of low uh, unemployment in South Africa. They're taking frustration on foreign nationals. So not everybody, like most of the parts of uh, Johannesburg, like Santan and other areas, they don't even know some of these things are happening. You know, it's only happening in the town, downtown Johannesburg, like the foreign, where the foreign owned businesses are. So things are back to normal, although some of the South Africans, they totally disagree with what is going on. And um, th things are okay now. For now, things are okay. Although yesterday, in the suburb of uh, Johannesburg, in a town called uh, Pumalanga, the same thing happened again. A uh, xenophobic attack in one of the um, foreign-owned businesses there. Yeah. Okay. Now, with with this with this development, do, do you think that uh, this would open open up the South African economy uh, for for more jobs for South Africans? I I, I don't think so because. Most of these people that are doing these attacks, like I said before, these are people that don't work. These are people that are unemployed. They, they don't have jobs. So for them, the best way to do is to attack foreign-owned businesses. So even if they, 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 they do this, it's not on their own best interest. It's not. So have they found the root cause of these attacks or is the government still uh, pondering on what could have led to this um, unrest amongst its people? Uh, like I said, that we stated before, they are angry for the fact that Nigerians are taking their jobs, their women and stuff. But like, it's a small group of people. This is not... Uh, South Africans that have jobs. These are people who are who are not working. You know, young youths, people that don't know anything. It's not like uh, part of the, the 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 South African population. Like like I said, uh, almost eighty percent of people that work in South Africa, they don't even know something like this is happening. You know. All right, Salma. Um, I don't know. You have any more questions for her? Well, on security matters now. Uh, Selma, is security still on the high or are the police, have they gone to sleep based on the fact that um, some people are leaving their country? Is security still on high? Is it on, is, are the security men still seen along the roads, on streets, uh, where these attacks happened before? Yes, they are. Like in the CDB, the downtown of Johannesburg, there is a lot of security. And in the Julius area, where is uh, mostly where the Nigerians have businesses and stuff, lots of security presence is all over there. Yeah, it is. All right. Thank you so much, Salma Ba, a foreign national based in South Africa. Uh, we wish you uh, safety as you remain in South Africa. And thank you for talking to us. All right, uh, let's come to you, uh, Mustafa Issa. we are still stay on this uh, uh, South African story. On Wednesday, about 198 Nigerians returned to Nigeria. Uh, we're given an estimated time on when they were going to arrive, but um, they experienced some delay. And some of the stories we heard was uh, uh, the South African government tried to frustrate people, Nigerians leaving South Africa, uh, but we were able to get some of them back yesterday and as well as Wednesday. Uh, can, you, can you tell us why this frustration when the South African government already knew what has happened to Nigerians and other nationals in South Africa. I think the lady from South Africa um, said something <coughs> like that in her comments. She said South Africa wanted to know how some of Nigerians got into the country in the first place. Some had expired uh, visas, they'd been there for years. In order to return to Nigeria, they had to get what they call emergency travel documents. So there was need for them to really find out if the, the, your visa expired five years ago and now you want to get out of South Africa. Where were you between that time and now? What were you doing? It is true that a lot of some South Africa, some Nigerian South Africa 
are stay, they are overstayed their visas. It's clear. I th whoever wants to ask that kind of question, I don't think it would be right for me to say, why should you ask that kind of question? A lot of them are stayed there illegally. They are. They have expired visas, no working permit, nothing, they are just there. So for them to come back, you know, if you go to a country for instance, I'll give you three months visa. If you overstay that three months, if you have to come back, even four months after, they will go to ask you some questions. Why did you overstay? Where were you? What were you doing? And that's exactly what happened. That was why there was that delay. But it, given the fact that what happened, what transpired, as an emergency to me, you should have probably asked them not to apply the law as it ought to be applied. Because the, the, the scenario is quite different now. You, you get the point. So apart from that, what they did was normal. And uh, we should just say, okay, the next batch is coming on Sunday. We'll say, please, let's tour this over. Even those who have overstayed, now that they have emergency documents to travel back, please just allow them. You know, if you, if you ask me, I, I would have said that in line with current, current um, reality, in line with the current development at, at the moment, uh, uh, those itches wouldn't have been necessary. The, you are, I mean, the people, there seem to be like a seeming consensus that they, they should leave. Now they want to leave. Of what, of what essence is it uh, making it difficult for them to leave your country? You see, these are security issues. Man. But you cannot just, you see, yeah, maybe that's what I'm saying. We should have probably played with them. Those who are doing their job, they are doing their job, I mean, the normal duty. They ought to ask the kind of question because these are trained immigration officials. If they were given, I think there was, a, there was a kind of communication between Nigeria and South Africa. This matter shall be sorted out before then. So that by the time we get there, these guys will not bother to ask that kind of questions. Would they normally ask at any given point of time? Okay. So I hope that by the next batch, <coughs> like on a Sunday, this will happen again. <clears throat> Apparently, we hope we all hope that it doesn't happen again. Yeah. But um, the federal government promised that they would that the returnees would each be given uh, SIM cards and airtime that would last almost two months to help them uh, stay in touch with their families. For those who had still have families in South Africa and perhaps some in Nigeria, uh, the federal government also said they will give them twenty thousand naira for transportation. And the Bank of Industry also promised to help them with loans for small businesses. Is this adequate? Or do you think this is like an eye service to the world uh, to look like a Nigerian government really is concerned about the well-being of its citizens? You know, um, I don't I want to see whether it is adequate or not adequate. Uh, somebody who has, who has lost uh, his means of livelihood in South Africa, if your business was only two millions, you've lost everything, you are back in your country. Whatever government could do to probably uh, make you to start life all over again, should be done. The, the, the back of industry, did he tell us the amount that they're available. <coughs> they're available for them to start their businesses here? Maybe it depends on the way you, 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 you negotiate or talk to back of industry. You could get up to 10 million, 20 million, but, but it's, it's, it's silent. Even the issue of SIM card um, 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 and uh, airtime, did he tell us exactly how much airtime they, they are going to be given. Because when you say that will last there for two months, it depends on how you talk. I, I, so you, sometimes I will load my uh, phone, uh, one month um, data, before you know it, in a week it's gone. So if you, you say give me your two months uh, airtime that will last there for two months, it depends on how you talk. There was one guy who came back on Wednesday night. They asked him, and he said he left his wife behind because he didn't allow her to follow her home. Mm -hmm. because, follow him because the, I think the wife is from one of these African countries. The wife is from in Nigeria by birth. But by marriage, she's in Nigeria. But there are all laws there. I mean, we did tally. He said he did not allow his wife to follow him there to, to Nigeria. So he left his wife and, and her kid in, in, in South Africa. These are the issues that should be sorted out between the both government. I mean, the Nigeria and South African government. But all to right. me, anything that can be done by the government to resettle them in their country. Mm. Nothing is too much. They, they, they pass through a lot. They suffer. Mm. Uh, you know, back of industry is actually coming now to say, okay, what do we want to do in Nigeria here? How do we come in? I think, I think uh, it's a good idea and uh, it should be taken seriously. Okay, let's speak with Ikenga Ugochinyo in Abuja. Okay, um, Ikenga in Abuja, good morning. Good morning. Mm. 
Yes, good morning. Uh, you've been listening to our conversation. Uh, you listen to our guests in South Africa and then uh, our guests in Lagos. So how much sense do you make of this development on xenophobia? I mean xenophobia? Uh, first of all, I will uh, start by uh, commending the people who came up with all sorts of uh, palliatives. Uh, the, the, the government effort is also uh, commendable, even though it's coming late. But I have to first of all commend uh, the CEO of APIS, Alan Onyema, for putting his business on the line and sending his uh, aircraft to pick them. This is something the government would have done all over the world. Government always come to the rescue of their citizens when they are attacking foreign land. Uh, but giving them uh, uh, 20,000 Naira transportation to, to, to go from Lagos to uh, some, some of these people are coming back from areas that transportation costs might be up to 10,000, 15,000. You should have used the benchmark of a flight. The nation can afford that. You give them 50,000 or you give them 100,000. Some of these people have businesses worth over four, five, ten million 10 million Naira. And now you're talking about bank of industry giving them them. We know how bank of industry works. By the time they start asking them collaterals and all those stuff, they ask people. Some of these people don't have any collateral. Some don't even have family down here. So how are they going to get uh, uh, the, the collaterals and the conditions? I think it would have been better bank of industry telling us directly how they intend to give them this loan. Because if they're going to go through the process of bank of industry loan uh, uh, process, I tell you 80% of them will not be eligible to get those loans. So government should have set aside some money. If we can give money to uh, people that say they have repented from being Boko Haram members, if we can give money to bandits and all those sort of people, I think government should have be able to make out a lot of uh, uh, resources, set aside a lot of resources. All right, Chavi Kinga, we'll come back to you again on this, uh, on this matter. But um, Mustafa, uh, he's on the side that government hasn't done enough or is not doing enough in terms of uh, the 20,000 Naira transportation fare. He says some of them leave very far that a transport fare might cost up to 15,000. And he talks about the, uh, the cumbersome process to get these loans from B the BOI. Do you think uh, the government you know, did well or not? I think where you approach the BOI by yourself, of course, there will be conditions you have to meet before you uh, give you loans. But theirs is a special case. I wouldn't know the discussion between BOI and the federal government because theirs is a special. It's not just, they are not just coming like you and I. The, the, the victims of attacks in, uh, in South Africa, you know, I used to use the word xenophobic attack. It, to me, I'm beginning to have my doubts whether what is happening in South Africa is actually xenophobia. It, you know, the, the word xenophobia comes from two um, 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 Greek words. Xeno means uh, foreign and uh, phobia means fear. That means fear of foreigners. If what is happening in South Africa is xenophobia, really, how come that is attack hated for, for foreigners or, or fear of foreigners? How come this guy do not attack Indians? You don't attack Chinese? Why only blacks? There are reports that he attacked an no, Asian I, it, store recently. You know, you know, because, you see, to me, it's more or less black on black violence. Mm. South Africa has a large population of Indians. I've not heard them attack any Indians in South Africa. Are they also foreigners? How come they are targeting only the black Africans in South Africa? I, that is why I need to have a, a chair of mine over this issue of that is xenophobia or whatever. If, if it is xenophobia, really, it should attack all foreigners. Not just black Africans residing in South Africa. Yeah. Uh, you know, concerning the BOI thing, I think to me, if the government has it put in place, the measures, okay, this is the of South Africa should have special treatment. They should do that because they lost their means of livelihood in South Africa. They will be able to provide, they will be able to provide any collateral. Even if you make government stand as a guarantor for the loans they will be given, that should be done. Okay, let's, let's go back to South Africa where we still have Salma Bar via Skype. Salma, you have listened to uh, our guest in Lagos here, and he says, um, I'm sure he's, he concords with a position you shared um, the last time you spoke with us, that um, uh, it is not exactly xenophobia 
uh, it is so a few criminals. But but then, let, let let me ask you this directly. He said there are Indians in in South Africa. There are Malaysians in South Africa. Uh, there are Chinese in South Africa. Were these guys actually not affected by these attacks? Yeah, um, to touch a little bit on that, like I stated before, this is not xenophobia at all. Because, like he said, the word uh, phobia is fear and xeno is foreign. So if I have fear, let me say I'm scared of lions, <laughs> I'll be running away from them. I don't go chasing lions. So if they have fear for foreigners, why are they chasing them? I don't like using the word xenophobia at all. For me, it's a black and black, black on black crime. It's uh, South Africans going against uh, other African nationals. They are not attacking Chinese. They are not attacking uh, Indian, the, the Bangladeshis are here. They 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 have uh, tax shops everywhere, but this thing didn't happen in their area. It only happened in West, uh, like I, I said, West African owned business areas like Nigerians and Cameroonians. So it's definitely not xenophobia. I've refused to use the word xenophobia. For me, it's not. It's black on black crime, and that's how I see it. Uh, let's get a reaction from Ugo Chinyar in Abuja, and we'll come back to you on this one. Uh, this is a, a new twist to the story. Uh, Ugo Chinyar, xenophobia or something else phobia? Uh, we've, we've had Salma. Salma is a Ugandan, if I'm correct, uh, that resides, a Sierra Leonean, in, uh, residing in South Africa. And she thinks that it is not a xenophobic attack. The word xenophobia is not what is used or should not be used in this case. As um, there are other nationals in South Africa, uh, the Chinese and so on. But this attack is only on fellow black Africans. Would you consider this, uh, you know, uh, mere nomenclature crisis? Or what do you think this really is? Likes in the rural areas, they are so angry. They think that uh, the Nigerians, the Cameroonians, the people from Congo are the one taking their jobs. It's local rivalry, kind of. They hate them. I don't know why they hate them. It's not a, a xenophobic attack or having fear about foreigners. They are just. They don't want them. They they want. They always wanted to lose those uh, loot those shops. Any little thing they want to loot those shops. And also, there is something that they will not tell you. They always complain. Some of them, even when I go to South Africa, complain that uh, uh, Ghanaians, Nigerians, and Congo people are always taking their women. I don't know what that means. These women go to them willingly. Nobody. All right, sorry for that um, breaky transmission. We're going to hook up to Ugochinia as soon as possible. Uh, but you heard what Ugochinia was saying. Yeah. It, it, which is a concern that has been you know, on, on the news for a while that, uh, that the true. reasons for this attack is that the blacks or nigerians are going after their women or they're taking their jobs taking their women and you know some other things when you say going after their women but they are saying the guys are taking over their women i i i, I don't know should you go attack somebody's show because of somebody are taking your woman i i, I don't know I, I i i think i think it's too ridiculous for somebody to come up to say that it's attacking people because they've taken their women as if it's, 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 a, it's a pen that will just be taken. These women, are, they are human beings, for God's sake. They, they, they think. For a woman to accept to follow a man, she must attack a lot of things. It's not, just, it's, not, it's not a car that you snatch. It's a human being who has feelings. When emotions are involved in anything, please don't just say, look, if you have a girlfriend, anytime I go to her house and I see another man there, I'll just walk away. That means that you don't like me anymore. I take a walk. If you say, so you are not killing people, looting shops because you claim that somebody are taking. Yeah, your that woman. was what he said. No, no, about. no, that's what, no it's, it's true. Yeah. It's a major issue there too. Okay, so, is it, let's, let's, Salma is still there. Let's, let's ask Salma in South Africa. Salma, please tell us exactly what is it about Nigerian men that make them very attractive to South Africans? Uh, th th this is quite a funny question, you know, like he said, just because somebody 
is going after my girlfriend or somebody is my wife. It doesn't mean the authority to go and burn down the businesses or something. Uh, the thing is, South African women, they, I, I think Nigerian men just provide what South African men are not provided to, to their women. It's, it, it's a very silly thing for me to, <laughs> to try to justify that. But South African women, they like South African men. This is, is it's not a hidden secret. Everybody knows this here in South Africa. So the hate is there as well. You know, the, the hate is there. <laughs> Well, there, there, there is a, a bit of comedy or comic in this, in this, in this um, discussion. But on a serious note, uh, lives have been lost. People's livelihood have also been lost. And from what Ugochinian was saying, Mustafa, he said that they've always wanted to loot the shops. Yeah. The same way we saw in Nigeria, the way people that. attacked you know, these shops, you, they you always wanted to loot it. So what, how do we draw this thin line? What are they really fighting for? You, you, know, you know, as a student of history, we are told that when you say revolution, so people join for different reasons. Let me give you an example. When I was in university, there was a protest one day on campus. And there was one particular shop. It's very expensive. Only the children or the big men could afford to go there to eat. But during the protest by students, those who could go, afford to go there went there and looted the place and ate their food. Same thing is happening now. They very wanted to loot those shops. You know, just because of women or whatever. They brought the issue of drugs. For God's sake. I am sure South Africa has an equivalent of NDLEA. Mm. If there are any reports of people peddling drugs elsewhere, you go and, and, and read them. Not all Nigerians. Okay, if it is issue of drugs, how come they went to um, burn a car shop? What has car shop got to do with I mean, um, selling of drugs. Same thing in Nigeria. Those who could afford to go to the shop right. There was a protest in Nigeria. They went there and looted the place. How does that trust correlate with your, your protest against the phobia in court? Now, I don't, I don't, I don't, that word I'm beginning to <laughs> have a second to use, yeah. Yes, to use now. So it's the same thing. So they be the opportunity to loot. Opportunity to attack Nigerians or to other other Africa of Africa. It's not because of other drugs or because of uh, now the people carrying out that protest. I don't see them as educated people. What kind of jobs can they do? Ask yourself. You say you think about their jobs. Is that also? What jobs? Nigerians are mostly do their private business in South Africa. They're self-employed. So what jobs are they talking about? Hey, Hilo, we'll, stay, we'll, we'll take a break. We'll take a, a short break at the moment. Uh, uh, the conversation would continue shortly. Don't go away. It's getting hotter by the moment. We're discussing the xenophobic attack in South Africa. Please stay with us still. We'll say something. We'll say no.